Hey, what's going on, Disc Golf fans? Welcome back to round two, middle nine coverage of the 30th annual Tahoe Pro-Am presented by MVP Disc Sports. We're here at Premium Disc Golf. My name is Spanky Edwards, and I am here with my man, Dan Double N. Turner. Spencer, I mean Spanky, it's good to see you, buddy. <laughs> I'm excited to be back in the action here and uh, middle nine round two. Yeah, yeah, let's go. These guys uh, all played their way into the lead card uh, first round. And uh, yeah, I'm looking forward to it. No, we had a real hot front nine, I feel like, out of the group. Maybe Quinn, Quinn was six and nine. Tristan only had three. Yeah. Yeah, looking forward to see them, like, like I said in the previous round, moving into that, like, that, that get it off the front nine which we think is kind of the like the most scorable nine on the course moving into like once you hit 10 you're kind of going back into the woods getting a little tightly more tightly wooded so hole 10 right off the bat you can see yeah. right off the tee shot there's a lot of yeah right off the bat there's just a, a lot more trees yeah this hole is down to the right deep 420 a lot of guys are throwing a turnover or something like that quinn probably a little low here yeah, and then, I mean, just right of that tree, he's got a wonderful line. Oh, no, yeah, I don't it's, mind laying up to the gap. That's, that's a good play by him. Ooh, early with the zingers. Tristan fading out a little bit early, but he's down there. Look pretty clean. Osgood going to try and throw a nice turn over here backhand. And that's, like, the line you're looking for, but a little bit overturned can get caught up on that right side it's it's a yeah. really it's definitely a, a finicky like perfectly thrown shot to get all the way to the basket a lot of these shots are going to come up a little short maybe a jump putt or a short pitch up hopefully for the par yeah miguel reaching backhand as well this one hooks up it's got a chance Caught, uh, caught those trees. There's like two or three she's kind of right in the middle of where the disc is turning at. You can see, even, you know, even Quinn, he's got a, a straight look at the basket from where he was, even even yeah. hitting super early. Now I, yeah, I see why he played the layup there off his first shot. <laughs> Good one. <laughs> yeah, it's not the hardest of the par threes, but it's definitely a tough two. It's a tough two out there. A lot of these guys definitely just pitching up for the you know, for the three. Evan with a nice fair look there. Yeah. Just coming up a little short. This is Tristan's forehand drive. Oh, high floaty putt. It's close. And this is a good spot to be from where Quinn had originally hit. That's a good save. Yeah, yeah definitely a good par save from, I mean, hitting that first tree, you've got to be 250 to 280 out or something like that, right? Further. Further, okay, yeah. Everybody just kind of tapping in their pars here. Hole 10 didn't have a lot of birdies, I don't think. Just one this round. The homie Justin Johnson got it. Oh, attaboy, Justin. Way to go. Yeah. Yeah, like I said, it's not it's not the hardest of the par threes, but it's a difficult two. I don't think anybody's, like, sweating the four so much, but they're definitely hoping to take you know, no worse than a three. Yeah. Hole number 11, 307. Yeah, this is on the, that right side pin position. The, this forehand play that we're seeing from Tristan uh, is my preferred play, but there is a lot of different ways to attack yeah. this one. We're going to see the lefty from Evan, which is a similar, you know, the same shot as that the, looks the ready forehand. He's asking for help, but yeah. maybe he went a little straight. There is a there is a right side uh, backhand line like Kaiser line over there. Lefty forehand, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah sure, yeah, the lefty that's forehand fair. line. That's fair. But well, I think there's a lot more branches that come into play. But then there's also like a huge, like righty righty backhand. Um, there's a huge like righty backhand turnover line to on that left side that get actually does get all the way there. So there's a lot of different ways to attack this one. I do think that right up the middle with the righty forehand is kind of the way to go. Yeah, I think I see the most consistent results with that, with that play as well. 
Everybody's just kind of pitching up here for their par. Will, this is like deep sea two. Ooh. Oh my gosh, I thought that went in. <laughs> that was a fair bid. Osgood's got a birdie putt here with the lefty backhand. Oh, a little short again for him. Yeah, I chose to lay that one out. Oh, there's the bird. Okay, nice. I do like sticking those bushes because they stop you from going long, so you can kind of like you just pump it right into them. Usually leave yourself just inside the circle. Oh, no. Let's get off the cage. Well, that's definitely a good birdie for McGill. Yeah, I know personally, coming into this one, I, I am, I'm thinking birdie on this one for sure. I, I, I know with with the righty forehand up that gut, it's it's totally doable. It's only 307. It's it's not far away. It's, yeah, it's definitely right some obstruction, but there's a wide open gap to get all the way there, so. Definitely hoping for the hoping for the bird, but not mad at a par, but hoping for the bird. Nah, dude, birdie or die. Birdie or die, baby. Let's go. <laughs> Three oh seven. Nah, it's it's a little it's a technical shot. Hole twelve. Yeah, this is a little par three, two ninety four. These guys are just trying to throw a big High hyzer, moving left. Yeah, there's a spike hyzer like Andrew threw Over. there, or you can go with like a low it skip shot, or like I saw some right-handers that throw a forehand, like a turnover down in there. Um, yeah, the trickiest thing about this green is it's not far away. It's not the distance. It's about getting under or over the trees. You don't see a lot of park discs on this hole, I don't think. But uh, Yeah, there's just so many branches that can stop you from getting to it. But, you know, the... The perfect shot all of a sudden skips under the branches, jumps up around that last little tiny guy that's next to it. You can't see now, but you will when we get to the I green. do like the high play myself. Uh, but, you know, you see here Tristan's going to go with that righty turnover forehand. Yeah, and that will drift so far left that by the time it hooks up, it's getting all the way around those... Yeah, around those trees that would be to the right of uh, Quinn. Yeah, all these hyzers, this, this is a pretty common landing zone for all these guys, just like outside of circle one. And it's, kinda, it's, it's hard to tell, but the, the tree that you could see right there, the main pine tree, there's actually a really large gap between that one and the bush behind it. But usually that tree is in your way. Miguel got close. There you go. He wanted a birdie. Yeah. Good start to his uh, middle nine here. Yep, a couple more tap-ins, and we're moving on to 13. Kind of the coolest part of the course, really, with it, with the, the views that we get from 13 and 14, just through the meadow, looking up over, you know, obviously Heavenly, and then you got Friel in the back, and just one of the reasons this course is so unbelievable is the views that we get just from our plain little fairways that we weren't really... You don't really expect it, and then all of a sudden you emerge into these incredible views. Anyway, hole 13, par 3, 270. This one's a little funky. There's a lot of different ways to get there. There's a backhand hyzer line, backhand I think kind this of flex turnover. Line, yeah, like turnover flex is the most common play I see. There is, a, there is actually a really good forehand line that w goes just about the same direction that um, Evan just threw. And it actually, if you can get the angle correct, it can hit the ground and skip all the way towards the basket. But yeah, the, the, like you said, the most common, I think, is going to be that, mm -hmm. that backhand turnover. Big forehand players like this shot. I've seen it work out. She looks like Tristan got down there pretty clean. Everybody else is, you know, circle three or worse, I think. Yeah, it seems pretty, like that's pretty common from that to be... I feel like with this hole, unless you pure it, you're C2, C3. You're yeah. either parked or C3. You know, it's yeah. it's really hard to just get, like, 40 feet. You're either there or you're not. Definitely. Nice clean-up par put by Mr. Collins. 
Here's Tristan. Okay, he's tapping, birdie. Over the top. I like that. Yeah. It's a good play. There's a view of the, the meadow and the mountains you were talking about. Yeah, Friel Peak in the back there. Yeah, on the left, we got Job's Peak, right? And Friel to the right? or I don't know. <laughs> Do you know? I think that's right. I believe Friel's on the left. Really? I thought we're on the right. We'll make a map bet later. Anyways, hole 14, 384. This one, uh, the gap that Andrew's playing here is tough. Um, Tristan is going to flex one out here. This is one's popular if you got a power sidearm for a right-hander. That is tr probably just outside circle one. That was a good shot. I like this play here, big turnover. Quinn does not like it. Yeah, he hates it. Uh, way too straight. Yeah, you really gotta you gotta force the turn for sure. Even even yeah. with a flippy disc, you gotta make sure that it's on Anheuser the whole Evan, time. This was a good line, just a little bit low. He'll come up into circle two. Will looks like he's following Tristan's line through the skinny gap. Oh, forehand roller. Here we go. I like that. Yeah. I would like to see that one finish. <laughs> yeah. I don't see that play much on this hole. So from here, Will, I mean, like a par would be. Oh, yeah, yeah, he uh, got caught up in that. Probably a miracle. I'm not sure if two-meter uh, was in effect for this tournament. Man, what a, what a wild lie. I think that actually worked out, though. Yeah. It looks like it got all the way there. Here's Will trying to get up and down for bogey. Looks like he's up there for a putt. Yeah. Andrew threw up the middle. I mean, I've seen that line work a couple times, but it's it's hard to get a clean look on your second shot, I feel like. Here's Tristan's forehand, yeah. Under this tree. He was trying to make it, but he'll have an easy an easy par. Wild to be that close and just be so obstructed. Play like hole 14, you won't see a lot of birdies on this hole. We just had three birdies uh, during round two on hole 14. And every time you say that stuff, it, it makes me feel so good about not getting it when I play it. <laughs> yeah. Because I mean, it's it seems like it's right there. Like, it seems like, yeah, I just throw your full power shot and get there, but it's not. It's a really perfectly thrown technical shot. It's a specific shot. It's a power shot, yeah. 384. It's 384, but it's actually, if you're throwing that Anheuser shot, then it's, like, really far away. Yeah. The disc is traveling far. Hole 15, par 3, 278. This is one of my favorite holes on this course and it's a shorty it's kind of silly it seems like a dinker to everybody but honestly i actually do like it because there's so many different pin positions i like how many different ways you can play this hole uh tristan just threw a beautiful shot there actually that forehand got right up around that left side and swinging i like in. this line quinn's throwing yeah I like. I just like how widely spread the different pin positions are, whereas some holes can feel like they're just a little bit, just a little bit further than each other. This one, I mean, those two trees that Owen, uh, Evan just hit, um, I feel like they're really common to hit because you're just trying to swing around them. But that's gonna. Yeah. It, it seems like a chip shot, but at the same time, somehow everybody ends up. How's it? Was it, what was that? That was a misfire by Asgood. Hopefully he can bang a long par putt. Here's Will from circle two for birdie. Coming up a little short. Okay, so this is Evan for par. Okay, a little high floaty. He's trying to make it. Yeah, for sure. Oh, Quinn's gonna want that one back. But yeah, that's what I that's what I mean about this hole is that it seems like this little chip shot, yet we're seeing a one birdie. Yeah, a good birdie from Tristan. That pulls him within one shot of Quinn. We haven't touched on it too much, but uh, halfway through through uh, round two here, Quinn is leading the tournament, 17 under par. Tristan just caught up to him, 16 down. McGill's four strokes back at 13. And Osgood's going to have to write the ship here soon if he uh, wants to stay in contention. Yeah, I mean, 
going going through that six hole loop, I you know these guys are, you know they're definitely hoping to snag some birdies back there, and anyone that didn't, they're gonna definitely feel like they missed out, because we're going back into that more tightly wooded area. Hole 16 is a new plan placement here at Bijou last year, and then this year the pyramid came into play. Um, Tristan tried to go up the gut with a forehand. Looks like he came up a little bit short. I think this is way inside from McGill. He's trying to push it outside around that pine and skip back. Yeah, you want to keep it wide right with the backhand and then yeah. let something stable finish mm -hmm. up. Quinn hates this one, rightfully so. Just missed his line by it. A mile, and that's the big thing is if you if you're early, being as downhill as as it is, you're going to get the left skip. You're going to get a flare. That's kind of the line you're liking. Will's hung his out a little bit wide to the right, but you yeah you want to be over there and then get the skip back for sure. Let's see if Osgood can uh, put a put a move on it. That looks stable enough. That'll put Evan. I think that'll put. Yeah, it's hard to hard to I couldn't tell where it finished, but. It definitely looked like he had the right width with the right stability. Quinn with an honest bid from 48 feet. Oh, right off the top, man, and stayed at the base. You know, putting in an elevated basket, it's always good to catch a little bit of metal, you know, <laughs> especially when you're trying to bring it in there. Okay, there so this is good. Yeah, this is where Evan landed. Another high floaty. He's looking, definitely hoping to straighten those out i like the height that he's putting them on them that he is putting on them but he's putting them a little high and a little hyzer so he's going to want to straighten those out this elevated basket you know just just makes it's not like that much but it's just different we than what you're have, used to we must have missed a putt because he just no you missed a putt we didn't miss a putt but that's fine that was bogey for osgood oh darn Oh, okay. It's fine. Quinn with the three. He's the hot man, but if you look at his last, you know, what, seven holes now, it's just, you know, he's it's pretty flat. Um, nobody's really doing it big here just yet, but a lot to golf left. We're just over halfway through the tournament, you know. Do you know if anybody is out there putting up hot rounds? That's a great question. Either way, this is hole 17. Oh, sorry. Uh, par 3, 275. Uh, seems to be in the short position. There is two... There's really only two plays here. The righty forehand out there, the righty backhand up the gut. If you're a lefty, Dan, what's the plan? I'm throwing an eagle forehand up the gut. 100%. Okay. Yeah. Going right up the gut at it. Or wait, is it in the deep? No, it's in the short. It's okay, in the yeah, short. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like the up the gut play. I mean, this forehand that Will's going to show us is also nice. You know, you just kind of hit one gap with something stable and let the disc work back. Yeah, hoping for a big flare at the end. Yeah. And it's very, very doable shot. Yeah. The up the gut line is, I would say, the ace line. But I think the forehand line is almost like the you're going to guarantee you get yourself. Yeah, if you have that shot, it's an easier gap to hit off the tee. Sure. So you don't have to contend with all the trees. It's just all one the way gap down. with a stable disc, which just kind of simplifies things. Which in you know in disc golf, it's nice to simplify things. I think you know sure. what I mean. Like, you know. Yeah, let's just try to let's try to hit one single gap instead of fifteen gaps all the way down a fairway. Yeah. Right. <laughs> Oh my gosh, that was so close. Right off the cage. All right, Evan tapping in the par there. Oh, Tristan's gonna have to tap in the bogue. And then we've got Quinn with the bird. Yeah, Quinn had an easy bird. Oh, and, and, and Will, Will with the yeah, bird. they're both right there. Um, we had some camera difficulties there, but it still counts. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. Hole 18, par 4, 540 feet. Um, you see the players throwing up this alleyway. And, you know, you want to throw something about 320, 330 feet, maybe stable, and then skips left to get in position. Andrew's asking this for, to move left, and it looks like it did just that. 
I think from there he's going to have a pretty straight play at the basket from about 230 feet. Yeah, as the camera zooms in, it's hard to say, but there's a dead, like about a 10 foot tall, like dead stump, and you want to be in front of that. Tristan, look at this, this is a spicy line. Wow. Wow, that's the way to get the most distance on this hole and still be in the fairway. So this is the stump I was talking about that you uh -huh. want to be in front of and not behind. Yeah, well, did you not know? Jesus. Being behind that is so rough. It's so difficult. And it's crazy because Evan is only five feet in front of that, and it changes his shot mm -hmm. entirely. So Yeah. Although Evan came up probably circle two there. Quinn doesn't love this from a knee. Fades out a little bit early right. But he'll have. We'll see what he has from there. This is where Miguel <laughs> drives got to. I liked it off the tee. He looks like all highs are all day. If you beat that little Christmas tree, um, then you're putting, is the way I play this hole. Yeah, I think Miguel's in the circle there. Here's Tristan's forehand. Look at He just barely threw that, you know. Oh, well, he did. It's funny because it's, it's a little just, bit short, but it's not. It's so. That little no. tiny pine tree is in the circle. So. No, I mean. This whole particular hole has quite a few pin placements. There's a par five. I think maybe we'll see final round. Um, it's an easier birdie than this. This is a tough birdie. But Osgood made it look pretty easy there. Nice putt, buddy. Yeah, way to go, Evan. <laughs> Sorry. Nice birdie uh, for Andrew there. This is definitely one. I mean, I think you know. All, I think everybody's looking for the bird on these on the par fours they're given on this course because yeah. they are there. For sure, it's they're they're not necessarily that difficult to get as far as distance wise. You know, they're there and the fairways are fair. So, hence the name. Yeah. All right, that's gonna be a wrap here for our mill line coverage of the round two. I hope you guys uh, are intrigued enough to check back in for the final nine here of uh, round two. We got Quinn with a seven down through 18, leading the way in the tournament. 18 under par. Tristan, two back of that. McGill, two back of that. Collins following suit. And Osgood, hopefully he can finish out his round with some birdies here. Um, thanks for tuning in, guys. Yeah, please join us for the back back nine of this round way and, uh, back the nine. way back nine and uh we'll see you soon